Hello everyone. I welcome you all to this webinar on uh, regenerative medicine in aesthetic dermatology. I am Dr. Tanraj Chavan and today I am going to present on nanofat in aesthetic dermatology. This is my disclaimer. And uh, to start with nanofat in aesthetic dermatology when we talk about uh, when you are saying nanofat it is very confusing for a lot of us because there are very uh, many terms which confuse say nanofat, microfat. SVF, adipose derived stem cells. So first I am just going to cover briefly on what these various terms are. When you are talking about microfat, uh, when we suction out fat from our body, it is uh, taken out through a cannula and a syringe. So the cannula at the tip has holes and when you are calling it microfat, it means that the size or the diameter of the holes varies from about 1.2 to 2.5 millimeters. So it is that small fat particles which are known as microfat. When we take this microfat and emulsify it by passing it in between two syringes connected by a three way, I just showed a video about it. And when we destroy or emulsify these adipocytes, what we get is a mixture of the stromal vascular fraction that is present in the fat and the emulsified adipocytes. So this stromal vascular fraction is another term which is coming up very nicely and prominently in regenerative medicine. This stromal vascular fraction are the various cells that are present in the adipocytes. So these cells also contain a type of cell or a group of cells known as the adipose derived stem cells and these are the adipose ADSCs as we call them and these are also quite uh, famous. So these all terms is what we are going to see repeatedly in this webinar and uh, I am just going to cover shortly what nanofat is. It was first described by Patrick Tonard in 2013 that was the first time the paper came out. Before that, in 2001, Zucatol had described adipose derived stem cells in the adipocytes and the large quantities that are available, but it was difficult to isolate them. It was done in the laboratories by using collagenase, by uh, dissolving the collagen in the adipocytes and then getting out the stem cells, culturing them. So it was a very tedious process. What Tonard, by publishing in paper, brought out into the world was a method of mechanically isolating uh, the stromal vascular fraction and the adipose derived stem cells. So it made it quite easy and from the laboratory the procedure came out into our OPDs, into our clinics, into our procedure rooms and thus uh, got started a new revolution I would say in uh, regenerative medicine because it now becomes very easy to get the stromal vascular fraction. The, all the regenerative uh, potential that is attributed to nanofat today is because of the stromal vascular fraction. When we see stromal vascular fraction what it contains basically is three major types of cells. One of the mature cells which are present in the adipose tissue that is the adipocytes, the fibroblasts in between, the smooth muscle cells, endothelial cells, blood cells. Then there is the progenitor cells which give rise to these mature cells and the most important ones for us are the stem cells, the mesenchymal stromal cells, hematopoietic stem cells, pericytes, supraadventitial cells. So all these cells together uh, form the stem cell niche that is present. So this concept of stem cell niche will also hear, hear in the dermal micrograft. So it is believed that the stem cells per se individually need, uh, when they have to exist and have to give their effects they need to be together along with the cells that are present around them. So together if we transfer them anywhere the effects are more and more prominent. So the stem cell niche concept is also uh, applicable to stromal vascular fraction also. And when we are mechanically uh, disrupting the adipocytes and making it into nanograft, nanofat, this uh, stem cell niche is preserved, it is believed. Tonard observed the following effects. So even before Tonard this, did this, uh, Coleman when he published his paper in 1993, even in his paper back in 1993 when adipose stem cells uh, were not known to be present in adipocytes, in adipose tissue. He had observed that there is a change in uh, the skin texture, the skin quality when he transferred fat uh, below the skin. So this same thing is carried on and this effect of adipocytes is now known to be due to the stromal vascular fraction, the regenerative effect and Tonard in his study, in his paper has explained what are the effects that have been observed. So it's neocollagenesis, new elastic tissue formation and improvement in the facial dietates. That's what Tonard uh, noted. There are also in vitro studies uh, like I have uh, shown in the references which say that adipose uh, stem cells also inhibit the melanocyte proliferation. That is very interesting and uh, proliferation and synthesis by down regulating the melanogenic enzyme. So that 
also now brings us uh, the indication of nanofat into hyperpigmentation. Of course, it's still to be discovered uh, practically in patients, but uh, in vitro it has been observed. How Tonard did it? Uh, Tonard's method, this is a video from Tonard's paper. And what he did is basically connected two syringes with a connector and passed the fat multiple times, about 25 to 30 times in between the syringes and uh, when he passed it the adipocytes were destroyed once these destroyed adipocytes uh, so now they could be filtered the purpose of this uh, step of filtration is because of the fibrous tissue that is present in between the adipocytes that is not able to pass through smaller needles so we filter it so that we separate the fibrous tissue and now this liquid is easy to pass through say 27 gauge or 30 gauge needles which otherwise microfat needs to be passed to a 21 or 22 gauge cannula. So in this we can see the fibrous tissue there when we zoom in, uh, which has been filtered out. We take this liquid now that we have, what we call nanofat or commonly also known as liquid gold, and we then inject it maybe intradermally or subcutaneously. In Tonard's paper, the results that Tonard has published include these following results and uh, in the decolletage area, the photo damage that has happened, the uh, wrinkling that has happened due to aging, that was improved. Periorbital uh, dark circles, under eye dark circles that we commonly call, those have been improved quite nicely by the transfer of nano fat, even the pigmentation has reduced. Perioral rightids, photo aging, and uh, normal aging also in the perioral area is improved by doing nano fat plus maybe intradermal micro fat to an extent also. Nowadays, that the, tonad, the method that Tonard described was a uh, very uh, primitive you may say because he just used a nylon mesh to filter it as we saw in the video and now closed systems have come kits have come which help prepare us uh, help us preparing the nano fat without making them exposed to air so it improves the quality of the procedure so this is the kit that i use it's a coesis kit but also other kits like a uh, tulip kit and many other kits are available in the market uh, which help us prepare the nano fat Interesting paper, this one I would like to discuss by Menkes at all. It's in PRS Global Open. You can, of course, read it in detail. Uh, the observations are quite interesting in this paper. I found it very interesting. It's published this year itself. Uh, in all the patients, they confirmed an improvement in the texture, elasticity, glow, firmness, wrinkles, and skin hydration. So, all this regenerative effects that were seen, it's quite interesting. The patients, uh, when they performed skin biopsy, they also found that an increase in the collagen and elastic fibers both. Uh, they have not, uh, they also found an increase in dermal cellularity, but they have not found an increase in the epidermal thickness or the mucin content in the dermis. So quite interesting results. Of course, we have to try it in our patients and uh, we, are, we have done it in few patients, but we need more patients to uh, find out the results also. This is how they did it yeah, subcutaneously is what they injected. And more details are there in the paper. And uh, the results that uh, Menkes has shown, uh, we can uh, see in these slides. It's also there in the paper again. I'm saying I uh, mentioned a link, uh, reference to that. Uh, periorbital uh, area also, the nanofat is giving quite nice results. Even in general, tightening and glow is what was described. I'm sorry. Then, when we come back, uh, we the next indication that we want to discuss is in hair loss. Many papers. Stromal vascular fraction in uh, all different types of alopecia, and uh, various papers are there which are showing how the results can be expected. And we definitely one thing that we can explore more with respect to alopecia. It's very uh, similar concept to the dermal micrograph theory. And the last indication I want to uh, discuss, and something that I'm very passionate about, and something that the results that I'm seeing are very astonishing and surprising also. Uh, is in acne scars, these type of patients whom we have rolling scars and these are the results that we can expect. So what I uh, do is, the technique that I am following is uh, subdermal microfat and intradermal nanofat injections and I will share a short video of this also with the, uh, in, the, in this presentation and the results are really astonishing, uh, results of the kind which a single session, all these results that I am showing are to a single session of Microfat and nanofat together, the regenerative effect uh, due to the nanofat and the volumizing effect of the microfat. In a single session, uh, I have seldom seen results with say magnetic radio frequency or fractional CO2 to this extent, uh, improvement of this extent in a single session. So another results, uh, a result in say uh, shadow lighting which helps us uh, understand it more. 
So quite interesting and something definitely all of us should try. Last thing is the various ongoing researches that are going on currently registered in the clinical trials in the US registry on a nano fat and adipose derived stem cells, normal vascular patterns, which includes scars, facial atrophy, burn and wound healing, skin grafts. Alopecia is also being researched in multiple studies, uh, chronic spontaneous articaria, scleroderma, pressure ulcers, and lipodystrophies. Uh, with this, uh, now I'll just show a video of this procedure, how it is done. Greetings. Today I'm going to present autologous microfat and nanofat grafting for acne scars. The steps involved involve harvesting the fat, processing it outside and then injecting back inside below the scars. These are the results that we can expect with monotherapy with a fat transfer with no other treatments done. The initial steps involve cleaning the area, sterilizing it and then creating the entry point for the cannulas to go in. Uh, the entry point is anesthetized with 2% dialocane and then with a 18 gauge or a 16 gauge needle, the entry port is created. The cannulas first go straight vertically inside and once the skin is passed with a giveaway sensation, we pass the cannula horizontally. Klein's tumescent solution is used and the end point for tumescent is a very hard, uh, hard tumescent skin. Then uh, the various harvesting cannulas are used with multi ports or two or three ports, different types are there, which can be used. About uh, 2 millimeter or 2.5 millimeter diameter cannulas can be used. Minimum negative suction pressure about 2 to 5 ml ideally in a 10 ml syringe or maybe 5 to 10 ml in a 60 ml syringe can be used. The least amount of pressure that we use maximum is the graft survival the left hand acts as a sensor and helps us in guiding where the cannula is going to and feeding the fat into the cannula ports once we have the fat outside we then can process it in three different ways washing and filtration decantation or centrifugation in the washing and filtration step what we do is we use normal saline to wash the fat of the tumescent anesthesia solution and also the RBCs and WBCs. Once we wash it, the washing fluid is then pushed out of the system. Fil various sizes of filters are used in order to prevent the adipocytes from going out and the stromal vascular fraction from going out of the system. This is a commercially available kit which can be used. In decantation method, no uh, kits are required. We simply make the syringes stand for a, uh, maybe 10 to 15 minutes and then the fluid which collects down due to gravity is then pushed off the system. This is a very crude method but still can be done. In centrifugation, we use a centrifuge to separate the layers of fat and then we see here the fat separated into the oil layer, the fat layer and the fluid. Nanofat is created by emulsifying the microfat. So the fat is passed between two syringes connected by a three-way connector about 30 to 60 times. And once we have the fat emulsification, we separate uh, the fibrous tissue that is there in that so that then the fat becomes a liquid which can then easily be injected through an insulin syringe or any syringe attached to a 27 or a 30 gauge needle. The fat grafting procedure starts by creating the entry ports, a port point from which all points in the acne scars can be reached again a 18 gauge needle and then the injection cannulas are smaller they are about 0.8 or 1 millimeter in diameter so that's about 20 gauge or 22 gauge and then the fat is placed beneath the scars we can do subsession before the procedure or during the procedure or even the blunt cannula can be used to subsize part of the scars the Fat is placed in microboluses. The left hand again acts as a sensor, the eye for the procedure. And we place the fat beneath the scars about 0.1 ml to 0.2 ml per point, per point so that there's maximum survival of the graft. Placing large boluses doesn't help because then the survival of the grafts reduces significantly because then they don't give the required nutrition for the scene. Nano fat can be placed intradermally, should be placed intradermally like we place uh, PRP and there are also reports which support the mixing of nano fat and PRP as they act synergistically. Insulin syringe, the nano fat goes in quite easily and comfortably. The patient can just be prepped with topical anesthesia before the procedure and then just like we inject PRP, we inject the nano fat. So this whole procedure takes about half an hour to 45 minutes to complete 
and is quite painless for the patient giving very satisfactory end result as it is a minimally invasive procedure maintaining sterility is very important but it can definitely be done in our dermatology clinic thank you so much uh, for watching this presentation and now we will move on to the panel discussion in which we will discuss, uh, discuss all your questions and the various indications also again thank you so much